We've got Lisa Haven on the line. Welcome to the Next News Network. Lisa. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm freaking happy right now. Are you happy? Oh, I'm so excited right now. This is a huge, huge victory for us. And, you know, I know how hard you've been working. I know how hard I've been working. And I know how hard Trump's been working. This entire liberty movement has been working to defeat the globalist bastards once and for all, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I knew, like, there's been reports all throughout today, I don't know, I'm sure you saw a ton of them, uh, votes being switched to Hillary and machines being reported. I mean, there were buttloads. I mean, I, I, Drudge had a site you could report it. Larry Nichols had a site you could report it. InfoWords had a site you could report it. So all these reports kept pouring in of these machines and, I've never seen a fight back from the American people today, like, like I mean, today, like never before. I've never seen it. Never any election year has there been places you can report election fraud like this year. So I honestly think, Gary, that we stopped Hillary dead in her flipping tracks because that woman was still stealing despite everything. And Donald Trump, I mean, he went by a landslide. I know you've done other reports where you like, showed, like, how many people Hillary had at her conventions. I think it was less than a 1,000, and Donald Trump had, like, 30,000 in Florida. I mean, we had ton of these. But all that to say, I am so happy right now that we are we are there. We're on the precipice. Donald Trump is in, and I'm, I'm just calling it for Trump because, because we're there. And I say thank you to all your listeners out there because they are the ones who stood against the corruption, reported it, and got the information more. So every single one of your listeners should just give themselves a big pat on the back because, hell yeah, we won this thing. Yeah, I, I was watching it too, and I went into today very optimistic. Um, and my main source of optimism was derived from the pure, raw, grassroots numbers that you would see at these rallies. I mean, I remember going and, and supporting Congressman Paul during 2012. I remember doing that. And I recall the grassroots support that he had, and we just felt it. It was just so obvious. But there was a distinct difference this time around with, uh, with, with um, Trump and the fact that, I mean, the numbers were there every single place he went by the thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people. And I think Hillary, she knew this all along. She knew that fact. And then, of course, when you saw the small numbers turning out for her rallies, nobody going to visit, like, what, three people standing in line to see Tim Kaine, they knew that she was dead in the water. And they knew their internal polling was showing them that they were collapsing. By their last-minute resorts to move and, and shuffle volunteers around the country, uh, you know, holding these last-minute rallies in, in battleground states, they knew that they did not have this thing pinned down. And then, of course, them call, pulling out all the stops to... Uh, get all these celebrities on board, uh, these god awful, vulgar, and disgusting celebrities that, um, you know, like just in, in, a, in a last ditch attempt to sway the millennial vote. Uh, but all, everything they did was transparent, and I think the American people saw that. And of course, I think the media did a major disservice to her by reporting constantly in her favor, covering up for her crimes. Therefore, the American people saw through that and said, look, that we see the media covering for her. And we see them, how they're doing to Trump, bringing out these last-minute accusations and like all these things to try to take, it, take him down. But apparently nobody, nobody paid attention to those similar types of attacks that happened during the primaries in which everything slipped right off of Trump, everything. But at the end of the day, we're still seeing the numbers turned out for Trump, the numbers on the ground, the visual numbers on the streams, everything translated over into actual Real life votes, and that's why we can const we can say this is a Trump victory. Would you agree? I agree one hundred percent. Now here's the thing: I don't think Hillary Clinton's cause have come off just yet. She's going to lose this election. I have, I have confidence. We're, we're there. We are so there. And there was a landslide. The only way that you can win an election with their cheating, it's through a landslide. Now, I drove through Arizona, California, Las Vegas, Nevada. I drove through these states these last two months. I saw one Hillary Clinton bumper sticker, which tells me that that would not going nowhere. They know this. 
and quite frankly, they're sick of her. But here's what scares me, Gary, is I think, and this is just a theory, okay, let me say I don't know with 100% certainty that this is going to happen, but I'll share it. Because share it on my channel, share it on your channel. And I honestly think that we all know that the economy is on an unstable path. We also know that the globalist will allow things to happen. In this case, uh, although Donald Trump is not a globalist, he is not, he is anti-globalist, I think they're going to push back against him, and it could be possible that the bankers and all of that sometime during his presidency may break the market, may have an economic collapse. Now, again, it's a possibility. I'm not saying it with 100% certainty, but I think because he's a patriotic candidate that's pushing more nationalism versus globalism, they might just let it flop on him. And here we are, you know, at the <laughs> no, you know what? You, you, the election. Yeah, you're making a very good point. Possible. I think that's very possible because you still have Wall Street that can manipulate the markets. You have the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank, uh, can can manipulate the markets there. They can tank the whole thing, blame it on Donald Trump, and just and, and ruin him uh, in that respect. But I think Trump will see through those things. I think that oh, he, yeah. he's strong enough, a strong enough candidate to call out Wall Street, to call out the Fed, and say, look. You guys are liars. You guys are crooks, and you guys better fix this mess. And he'll and he'll bring him in, and he'll take him down. What I'm worried about, and I hate to say this, you know, right off the bat, but look, the change that he's really going to bring to Washington, the change that Obama promised eight years ago that never came. The, I th I'm a, I'm worried for his life. I mean, I'm yeah. sincerely worried that you're going to see some crazies try to take him out, and. I just I don't want to start this camp this this election or this presidency with that sort of um, concept in mind, but I think he knows the danger that is at, is at hand, and I know he's going to take appropriate steps. But I also think that the new world order would not just come out and try to assassinate the guy because it's been done before, and I think they would try to assassinate him on a character basis. Like you said, by uh, by tanking the markets and put, placing the blame on him and ruining him in that respect, so they could they could assassinate him that way rather than you know physically. Do you, what do you think about that? You know, I think it could go either way. I think what you're saying is an absolute possibility. They don't like him. We've had more. Okay, keep this in perspective. We've had more presidents assassinated than any other country. In fact, I believe it was Russia. Don't quote me on this, but it was one one country, and I'm, I'm vaguely remembering it was Russia, that specifically said that America is well known for their presidents being assassinated more than any other country. Yeah. What does that tell you? Yeah. What does that tell you? So, And here we are, any... Any candidate that we have that is more patriotic than the other, I think he's definitely on the list. So that's another way that I think it could go. Maybe they'll just take him out altogether, and which I'm surprised that they've allowed him to get this far. Which is make, which makes me think again. Think it's a possibility that it could go the direction of an economic collapse and then kill him, which they could too. But you know, there's there there are multiple possibilities. I don't put any of them past them, and I think you have an absolutely good point. So it's it's definitely something that is on the table, so I think it could go either way. Well, and I think, too, like I brought this up in a previous report, that the, the fact is, you know, with, with cameras on every street corner, everyone's got cell phones, you know, you can't just go and assassinate somebody. You know, and I, first of all, right. I, ha I hate even having this conversation. You know, I think it's, I think it's a negative conversation that we're, we're having, but I think it's, it's, it's an unfortunate one that we have to have, you know. Right. I agree, and that's the thing. That's why I'm I'm encouraging people everywhere pray for Donald Trump. Yeah. Look, he won. He's, he's winning the presidency. We're at that precipice, and I don't think we could have done it without American skin in it. Now we've had record numbers of turnouts for this election than any other year. I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at the statistics. That tells me that America knows what's going on. And even every I was watching Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, all of them. And all of them were saying, oh, this is so unacceptable. I didn't expect this. This could happen. How did this happen? Well, it happened because the real polls always showed it from the get-go, but we're talking about it, which makes me believe. And now this is a slight belief. I don't think it'll 
I would say maybe like a 30% chance that it could go this way. So I think lean 60%, not maybe 30%. So it's possible that she could contest it, which I'm not sure she will because she did say she wouldn't. So Hillary, you contest the election. Uh, but uh, if she does, she'll blame Russia because, see, all the polls, and they were rigged polls anyway, showed her leaning. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not we'll go in the, that direction, I think we got a 30% chance. So it's a slight, but it's definitely a possibility. What do you think about that? Uh, well, right now what I'm seeing is that we've got um, Pennsylvania has now officially been called for Trump. It just happened. Heck yeah. So we're at 264 for Trump. And he's already leaning on Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Alaska. So He'll get Arizona. Yeah, he'll, he'll get Arizona for sure. <laughs> And that's 11. That's going to put him over the top, and he's going to win this thing. Now, exactly. Hillary has already been seeding the public, like you mentioned, about the uh, the Russians blaming the Russians, blaming the Russians. I, I just don't know how, how she's going to make that stick. I mean, there's been so much, right. like, background noise. I mean, I did a report on on the cyber attacks that were alleged that were they were all bracing for. I mean, for goodness sake, they actually went into underground bunkers uh, you know, to protect the Internet infrastructure of the government to supposedly protect the integrity of the vote. And then we did another report here that apparently, this is an NBC report, that the federal government, U.S. federal government, actually hacked the Russian electric grid in anticipation of a potential hack on the U.S. election. So there was, a lot of, there, was, there was a lot of cyber espionage going on back and forth. Of course, these could all be leaked stories that are just intended to provide some sort of context or a pretext for a Hillary contention. So it's not outside the realm of reality that she would contest it. She's been blaming the Russians the whole time. Uh, but to make that stick, you've really got to, you've got to have a lot of evidence and to blame the Russians to interfere in the election on that, on that level, you're talking about creating a global war. And let's just, Hillary, she should just go back to, you know, uh, to New York, and she should just let her husband go and run off with, you know, teenage whores and, and be done with it. <laughs> he already is. Because he's, that's what he's doing already, you know. He's probably hanging out with them now. They're spirit cooking, right? They're, spirit yeah, cooking. They're, yeah they're, they're, they're having some spirit cooking stuff with them, with little children, and, and that's whole, I, I, I told my wife about that today, and, like, shh. She just couldn't, you know, she couldn't take it. Sick. It's sick. So, anyway, this is um, definitely a historic moment. Trump has now officially taken Pennsylvania. He is literally just, what, six points away, six electoral votes away from taking this whole election. And um, yep. that's just a matter of time. I mean, Michigan's already, I mean, he's already well ahead of her in Michigan. He's well ahead of her in Wisconsin. Arizona and Alaska. It's over. It's time for her to concede. She knows it. And thank God that uh, we're going to be witnessing the new birth of the Republic. What are your thoughts? Yep. And it, well, he had to have a landslide to do it. The only way he won this election is by a landslide. I guarantee you that she rigged a lot of this. And a, because, like I said in the beginning, there was lots of voter rigging. And, and as for the whole rush thing, I mean, 30% chance, maybe even lower than that happening. I don't foresee that, but it is a minor possibility because, like you said, they have already, quote, prevented that to some level, so they claim. Yeah. But I think we won this election by an even larger landslide than you're going to see on that television set because – we know, you know, the only way to win the election is through a landslide. And I've talked to Larry Nichols. He's a very good friend of mine. On many occasions, he wrote the playbook on how to uh, rig the election. And, and that's exactly what he said. He said, you know, the way to win the election is by a landslide. And it's not going to show by a landslide, but mm-hmm. it will show that we will win the election. So for that, I'm just ecstatic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy for the American people standing against freedom, standing against, and waking up for crying out loud. Yeah. The mainstream media every day, it yeah. didn't matter what media channel you turned on to, but every day they said, vote for Hillary, vote for Hillary, bash, bash Trump, yeah. and everyone went against him. So I yep. can't say I'm more proud of America any more today than before. Now, with that said, I can't say that Trump is going to be the best candidate ever There's that I don't agree with. 
Uh, well, we have to, we, we have to hold him accountable. It's our it's our job as Americans to hold him accountable. He doesn't get a free pass just because we voted for him. He need just like every other politician, he needs to be held accountable. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I agree one hundred percent. Well, I think also this is a referendum on on the corruption in Washington. This is a referendum on the media. Uh, I mean, the American people have spoken. They're tired of the corruption. They're tired of being lied to. They're tired of things being shoved down their throat without their approval. I mean, I'm just I'm Lisa. I have fought in this is now the third election that I've really fought behind. The first two. 2008 Ron Paul, 2012 Ron Paul, and then this election, you know, I, I eased into it. I really didn't get behind a candidate uh, until I started to really take a look at Trump and I realized that he was the guy. And then I, I, I jumped on the train. I jumped on the train, went full bore, and I said, let's do this and let's make it happen. And um, I'm glad to say that I finally have a candidate that I really truly stood behind that has won, that I put my blood and sweat and tears into and now we can celebrate this victory. So uh, folks who are watching right now, I want you to go to Lisa Haven's YouTube channel. I want you to check out her channel. Awesome work. She does great investigations, great commentaries. So hit up her channel and, uh, uh, and, and tell her that, you know, comment on her stuff. Tell her you found about her uh, through the Next News Network. And uh, any final thoughts, Lisa? I just want to say thank you to everyone out there who stood against the corruption, who reported it, who, uh, you know, made the videos or let the people know about election fraud, because without every single one of them, we wouldn't have been able to make this happen. And, and people who are getting truth out, because look, if Hillary got in, you and I would have been in deep shit. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> if I want to put it frankly. You it's know, true. and, and, and you know that, and I knew that. I knew our freedoms were going to go down the crapper, and, and, and quite frankly, I, I, I was scared. I was too. Uh, you know, at, at that level, and I'm so ecstatic. I was worried about, I was worried about, our, you know, the Second Amendment. I was worried about, um, and, but, but, I mean, first of all, the Second Amendment is, is, that's, that is our, our right of revolution. But what I was really concerned about was our right to free speech. And if they clamp down on, on our ability to speak freely and, and to dissent and have dissenting voices, and if the corporate media gets propped up in a Hillary Clinton administration, we're finished. We're finished. They're going to continue to come after us and, and squash our voices for simply speaking against her because that's how vile and vindictive and sick she is. Well, thankfully, she can go now and retire and wait for that special prosecutor uh, to summons her to stand before uh, Congress and get her just uh, uh, her justice. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Lisa, once well, thank again, thank you, Gary, yeah. for having me on. Yeah. No, thanks. Thanks for joining me last minute in cell phone interview, and uh, appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we'll talk to you again soon. All right, Gary. I'll at you later. Okay. Bye bye now. All right, that was Lisa Haven. You can go to Lisa Haven's YouTube channel. Just type in Lisa Haven News. You'll find out all kinds of stuff, great videos, uh, and you're going to be enlightened by her work. So what are your thoughts on our little conversation? Comment below, subscribe for updates, and uh, raise a glass for victory for that you would see at these rallies. I mean, I remember going and, and supporting Congressman Paul during 2012. I remember doing that. And I recall the grassroots support that he had, and we just felt it. It was just so obvious. But there was a distinct difference this time around with uh, with with um, Trump, and the fact that, I mean, the numbers were there every single place he went by the thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people. And I think Hillary, she knew this all along. She knew that fact. And then, of course, when you saw the small numbers turning out for her rallies, nobody going to visit, like, what, three people standing in line to see Tim Kaine, they knew that she was dead in the water. And they knew their internal polling was showing them that they were collapsing. By their last-minute resorts to move and, and shuffle volunteers around the country, uh, you know, holding these last-minute rallies in, in battleground states, they knew that they did not have this thing pinned down. And then, of course, them call, pulling out all the stops to... Uh, get all these celebrities on board, uh, these god awful, vulgar, and disgusting celebrities that, um, you know, 
like just in a, in a, in a last ditch attempt to sway the millennial vote. Uh, but all, everything they did was transparent, and I think the American people saw that. And of course, I think the media did a major disservice to her by reporting constantly in her favor, covering up for her crimes. Therefore, the American people saw through that and said, "Look, that we see the media covering for her, and we see them how they're doing to Trump, bringing out these last-minute accusations and like all these things to try to take it, take him down." But apparently, nobody nobody paid attention to those similar types of attacks. and machines being reported. I mean, there were buttloads. I mean, I, I, Drudge had a site you could report it. Larry Nichols had a site you could report it. InfoWars had a site you could report it. So all these reports kept pouring in of these machines. And I've never seen a fight back from the American people today. Like, like I mean, today, like never before. I've never seen it. Never any election year has there been places you can report election fraud like this year. So I honestly think, Gary, that we stopped Hillary dead in her flipping tracks because that woman was still stealing despite everything. And Donald Trump, I mean, he went by a landslide. I know you've done other reports where you, like, showed, like, how many people Hillary had at her conventions. I think it was less than 1,000, and Donald Trump had, like, 30,000 in Florida. I mean, we had a ton of these. But all that to say, I am so happy right now that we are we are there. We're on the precipice. Donald Trump is in, and I'm I'm just calling it for Trump because because we're there. And I say thank you to all your listeners out there because they are the ones who stood against the corruption, reported it, and got the information more. So every single one of your listeners should just give themselves a big pat on the back because hell yeah, we won this thing. Yeah, I, I was watching it too, and I went into today very optimistic. Um, and my main source of optimism was derived from the pure, raw, grassroots numbers. We've got Lisa Haven on the line. Welcome to the Next News Network. Lisa. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm freaking happy right now. Are you happy? Oh, I'm so excited right now. This is a huge, huge victory for us. And, you know, I know how hard you've been working. I know how hard I've been working. And I know how hard Trump's been working. This entire liberty movement has been working to defeat the globalist bastards once and for all, wouldn't you say? 